After collaborating with our team physician, Dr. John Corrado, and Professor Paul Canavan on campus, the sports medicine and strength conditioning departments decided that the old way of approaching medicine, which is injury occurs and reacting to that injury, wasn't in the best interest of our student athletes. With that said, we decided to take a collaborative, proactive approach and design a biomechanical assessment for each one of our student athletes, which would include range of motion, strength deficits, and overall general movement patterns. We would use those assessments then to predict future injury, look at performance decrements, or things that would limit performance, and then provide both general or global interventions and specific interventions for our student athletes. Uh, one of the biomechanical assessments we use um, with almost all of our athletes is what's called the functional movement screen. Uh, it comprises of seven tests that looks at global movement patterns, strength deficits, and range of motion through a number of joints. Uh, one of the primary tests that we look at for all of our uh, ankle and knee sports is the overhead squat. Um, the overhead squat looks at range of motion through the hips, knees, ankles, and through the shoulder joint. Through that test, we're able to look at limitations in strength. Can the athlete perform the test? Can the athlete actually sit down and get their butt close to the ground and perform a, a regular squat? If they're not able to do that, they have to compensate through different joints. The athlete will always be able to get down in that position, but will they get down with efficiency and through the right joints? Um, through that, after that test is done, we'll then take that information, we'll score them, and then we'll provide an intervention either specifically for that athlete or globally, like I said before, with men's basketball, it's a pr pretty easy trend to look at tight hip flexors or tight hips overall, so we address that. We know that most men's basketball athletes will come in with tight Achilles, so we address that globally. But from a specific standpoint, if athlete X comes in and he has a faulty movement pattern, whether it's through overhead squat, inline lunge, etc., we'll address that on an individual basis. So the, the initial biomechanical testing that we did with our ice hockey programs went very well for us. We were able to look at the, the causes of these specific injuries that we were seeing. And when we took those data, we tried to look for trends in that and then apply it globally to our team and address those injuries. After initially having success with both men's uh, basketball and men's and women's ice hockey, uh, we decided to look at our sports as groupings. There's clearly a ankle or knee sport. We involved volleyball and men's and women's basketball with that. There was what we call the groin sports, and those included men's and women's ice hockey, men's and women's soccer, and field hockey. And then we looked at our last, last two divisions. One was the overhead athlete, and that included, of course, volleyball. And volleyball was also known as a, a knee and ankle sport, so they had two, two assessments and two separate interventions. And then there was the power sports, um, which is our sprinters and our, and our uh, shot putters and our, our long jumpers, so mostly our track athletes and looking at how to develop those. So we're able to group our athletes into individual uh, compartments, ankle, knee, overhead athletes, um, groin sports, and our power sports. And from there, in a collaboration between sports medicine and strength conditioning, we're able to give them specific interventions here in strength conditioning. Um, with sports medicine, we're able to implement individual um, interventions. So if an athlete came in, we know that they're a men's basketball athlete and they probably have tight hips, we'll employ an intervention that's global for the entire sport and then we'll also implement specific interventions. So if I know that that men's basketball athlete, left ankles, Achilles is tight, and it's, there's a discrepancy between left and, and right, our, our uh, staff in sports medicine will, will provide a specific intervention for that athlete uh, to provide them long-term health and wellness. And then in, in strength conditioning, we'll do some of the more global interventions to provide the entire team with health and well-being. Once we realized that we had to predict injuries and not just react to them, we sat down with Dr. Canavan, Dr. Corrado on campus uh, and created a list of testing uh, that we would do with these athletes based off of the literature done by Timothy Tyler. So we were looking for imbalances, range of motion issues, or, or strength imbalances. Uh, and once we did that test the first time and looked at the data, we were able to find some alarming numbers uh, with one specific athlete. We provided that athlete with an immediate uh, intervention to address those issues. However, uh, not long after, they sustained that injury that we had predicted. So it gave us a lot of credibility and, and believability in our athletes, but it also reinforced our need to implement this program where we can identify, address, and eliminate these types of, uh, of injuries. And I think that's what's important for both departments is that we're protecting our athletes, promoting performance, but also uh, 
protecting their long-term wellness. Our end goal is to biomechanically assess every one of our student athletes. So in a collaborative effort between sports medicine and strength conditioning, a student athlete would come in the fall, get the traditional height, weight, blood pressure falls, and then together with strength conditioning, we'd biomechanically assess that student athlete. We'd look at range of motion, movement patterns, as I said before, and strength deficits. We'd then be able to get an initial assessment on that student athlete as a freshman, and then track their progress over four or five years. The data that we collect hopefully enables our student athletes to one, achieve success their very first year because we're able to correct faulty movement patterns right away. So a student athlete doesn't come in as a freshman, get hurt right away and have to sit out or not live up to their expectations. After their first year, we hope that the, the, the data we collect and the interventions that we provide, whether it's individual or global, allows them to be successful over their four years and achieve the goals that they, they set forth um, for themselves and the coaches set forth for them. But more importantly, that the, the faulty movement patterns that we were able to correct, the biomechanical assessment data gives us information and provides good health care for that student athlete, um, both in sports medicine, both, but both in strength conditioning as well, to provide them with an opportunity to be successful for the rest of their lives.